Uh, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to all the colleagues who are joining us. We will just wait for a few minutes because um, uh, some are still in the waiting room who are trying to join us. So, uh, welcome to the colleagues from Iraq, Heba from Egypt, and Hilal from Yemen. Uh, welcome to you all. So uh, we're now live on Facebook. Um, we have with us uh, interpretation, simultaneous interpretation. Please um, select on the um, three, bottom of the screen from the globe icon. Cl click on the language you wish to. So and uh, maybe Mary is with us here. Status. <laughs> uh, so Arabic speakers select Arabic, English select English, and mute original. Again, good evening. Welcome to you in this new of the sequence of uh, webinars. What are what is behind investigative um, uh, uh, reports? I'm Bita Antwin. I'm uh, editor from. Uh, uh, network editors in Istanbul. I'm happy to um, uh, welcome uh, uh, Mr. Petrifat, uh, Mr. Foke, who is now with us from Amsterdam. As I also mentioned, um, uh, there is interpretation, simultaneous interpretation. Please select Arabic for uh, Arabic. And we try to send the link for the investigation that Foke has conducted uh, so that you uh, check it before uh, uh, coming to this uh, workshop. Uh, but then uh, we will send the link again. This uh, report that we are going to discuss and its uh, uh, importance uh, because and it's unique and it's special. And the methodology of work could be applicable in many of our uh, work that uh, we now uh, apply in the different investigation watches uh, how big uh, uh, um, animals uh, has a significance in uh, the pain uh, world in 2017 UAE adopted uh, a law which prohibits uh, individuals to uh, uh, own or traffic um, animals or uh, and, and especially and it uh, restrict uh, uh, impose restricted rules on zoos and um, the breeding uh, centers. Uh, the law was supposed to be um, um, Im Im implemented. However, pictures from TikTok and Instagram showed that the, the opposite. It uh, exposed an, an industry of min millions of dollars about uh, uh, trafficking in these animals. So, following up uh, persons in the different geographical areas and the uh, animals that were trafficked uh, and, uh, and uh, uncovering what was hidden was what Foke has done with all high professionalism and with using the uh, open resources. And here I would like to say that part of the importance of this uh, topic uh, I, and so uh, this is why we'd like to uh, welcome him and in order to tell us uh, the methodology of his work. Uh, so uh, welcome to you, Foke. We'll give you the floor and please tell us more. Uh, how did you get to this idea? How did you think of such a topic in and such an investigative report? The floor is yours. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for having me and for allowing me to, to give this talk. Um, so, so before I discuss how I came on this idea, it might be a good idea to talk a bit about what Bellingcat is and what kind of research we do, so you know what kind of methodology I'm going to talk about. So, 
Um, Bellingcat is basically an organization that revolves around open source information. Um, that means that all the investigations we do um, draw from sources that anybody can find. So as long as you have a computer and an internet connection, you should be able to do exactly the same work that I do. I don't um, visit, for example, or call someone. I only look at uh, pictures I find on the internet and I use certain tools I find on the internet, which are all free. Anybody can use them. And so that's the kind of research um, I do. Uh, so, uh, which was discussed uh, here on the news in the Netherlands. And it was a um, football celebrity, a soccer celebrity, uh, who is living in Dubai, uh, but he's Dutch. And he posed with a lion cub in his home in Dubai. Um, and people were very angry uh, here in the Netherlands. They said, well, this is, this is bad for the animal. You can't you know, take it out of the wild. Um, but nobody really asked, um, where did this lion come from? Um, how did how did this celebrity get this lion to you know take pictures with in his house? Um, and so that's the question that that started um, this investigation. I just I was really curious where in where if you live in Dubai, how do you get the lion in your home? Where does where did he come from? Um, I know I I did a bit of research and I saw the law uh, that you already mentioned in the beginning of this. Uh, interview saying that it's forbidden to to transport these to own these uh, unless you are like a proper zoo or a research facility um, but private individuals can't have these lines so how did he, he get this that's that's where the to answer your question that's where uh, this investigation started yeah um i'll share my screen um to show the investigation or the article and I'll take you through some steps that I, I took. Um, so basically, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me already. Um, but um, so you're seeing my screen right now, right? Are you are you seeing yes, my screen? Yes, yes, we do. We do. Yeah, okay. Okay, perfect. So basically what I did was uh, start looking for uh, celebrities that also post with tigers. Um, and then I came across pictures like this. So here you see a celebrity uh, posing with a tiger. And this was posted, I think, this is Pinterest. Um, this was posted on Instagram, another celebrity um, also with a tiger. And this was on YouTube. Um, this person has uh, 10 million followers on YouTube and he uploads videos uh, sometimes with tigers. Um, and so by looking at these, I, I started to realize, hey, this might be the same tiger these celebrities are posing with. Um, because they're all you know, white, uh, uh, black of the same kind of age. Uh, so not too big, not too young. And they were posted around the same time. Um, so I know that tigers, uh, they're, the stripes they have on their, on their face and their body are unique to each tiger. So you can use those stripes to see, are they, you know, are they keeping the same tiger? Is, is this the same animal? And so I did that. I, I began comparing the, the lines um, that I could find on uh, the tiger in each of those pictures. And so I highlight some of these spots and stripes in these pictures here, but basically every stripe and spot should match because there can't be any difference. And they do, they, they, they are the same, it's the same animal. Um, so now that I know that these celebrities in this case are all, uh, keeping the same animal or using it to post pictures with, um, I still had the question, okay, apparently one tiger is moving around between celebrities, but I still don't know where it came from, right? So I started looking at things that were, um, you know, 
uh, written in the description of these pictures uh, or sometimes tagged. Um, so here you see at MBE.777. And that's, that to me was interesting because it's not a uh, full name. And I went to Instagram to look up this account and it was private. Um, and here in this other celebrity, you already see again at MBE.777. Um, again, the same account on Instagram, but still it was private. And here, uh, it might be difficult to see, but you see it here as well, MBE777. And so that's the account that I really got interested in um, to see, okay, if they are all tagging this account and they all have the same animal, then it must be related. This account must be related to those animals, probably. Because uh, in between these, these celebrities didn't have much to do with each other. They, they didn't hang out together. They didn't work together or whatever. And so even though this account was set to private, uh, I made uh, or I have fake Instagram accounts I use to try to follow people uh, without knowing that they are being followed by a journalist. Okay, what is going on in this Instagram account? Um, as you can see, there are multiple examples, but they're the same story over and over again. This is another animal uh, held by celebrities in Dubai, but it's the same animal again. And again, MBE777 was tagged. Um, it's the case here with cheetahs uh, too. Um, and even I could even find accounts that was sharing photos with animals, but didn't tag MBE777. But you could see through the stripes of in the spots that it's still the same animal that was being um, moved around, basically. And so once I got into the account, once he accepted my follow request, this is what you saw on the um, Instagram account. So it's basically a, um, it's like a window store. You see all these uh, little animals. There was no, no description. There was no uh, voice during the videos, no sound, uh, of no sound of voice. You could hear the animals. Um, and every, every uh, video and picture was tagged with his own name, MBE 777. Um, and basically, if you clicked on these photos, uh, again, no description, but other users who were following this account uh, were commenting on these pictures. And uh, they very often asked, how much um, is it for sale? Um, I've sent you a private message, et cetera, those kind of messages. So already there is something shady going on. And so you can also see from the pictures that it's not a zoo, right? It's a, it's a, it's a room. It's all the same room on the same couch. Uh, here he has um, four uh, tiger and lion cups. I've seen him help up to five or six. Um, here you see multiple two. So how does he keep all these animals in, in this room? Uh, that was very weird to me as well. So I wanted to find out, okay, I'll need to find out where this location is, where, where are these animals kept? So I know more about uh, what this person is doing. Um, and he was very, uh, he was very strict about information. Like I said, he didn't talk during the videos. You couldn't hear his voice. He never took a selfie. Uh, he never recorded uh, more than his own hand. You could only see his hand basically. Um, he didn't record anyone else. You only saw animals, maybe some part of his hand, and that's it. I didn't have any more information. Um, but I could see the people he was following through his Instagram account. And uh, within those, that group, the people he was following, there was a woman. Um, and that woman was posting pictures with the same kind of couch that I saw on MBE777 Instagram account. 
and also animals like this. And so because she did it so often, I started concluding, okay, she might be living there, or at least they're very closely related. And so this woman living in this apartment was not so good with her uh, privacy. Like she shared her name. Uh, she took selfies. Um, she recorded uh, once this video and you can see through the window, this logo over here. So it's on the building across from, the, from wherever they live. And you can already tell it looks a bit like an apartment building. And so knowing this sign and knowing this woman uh, and where she was posting or what kind of uh, photos she was posting, I could already very quickly find out that she was actually um, in this um, Jumeirah beach residence in Dubai. And it's like a 20 stories high uh, apartment building, not too big really. It's, it's a relatively small apartment, but yet all these animals were kept there. I could find all pictures of uh, the apartment on a rental website and I could compare the interior and see, yes, this is the same apartment. And so um, I kept making this link between the animals I saw being posted uh, that were kept in this apartment and animals I saw on different places on the internet. Um, and every time when I saw these different animals, because he didn't just keep um, lions or tigers, uh, he also kept, for example, uh, well, in this case, uh, serval. Um, and most animals, you know, when they have um, spots or stripes like this, they are unique. You can use those spots and stripes to see if it's the same animal. And so this, I could also find on an account that was called um, uh, Exotic Pets Dubai. And this, this account in his description um, openly said, we're selling, we're selling animals. You can reach out to us and for cash, we will deliver, we will deliver them to you um, globally. And uh, so that was my, my first indication that I, uh, that I found, okay, it's probably you know a trade, illegal trade that they're doing online um, of these animals. And also the woman who was Russian was using not just Instagram, but also uh, Russian uh, social media networks, Facebook, and they have a, um, a platform that's called Otnoplasty, that is uh, uh, some sort of uh, platform to reconnect with, uh, I think, high school friends or something. But it works similar to Facebook. They, you can upload uh, pictures and uh, you can connect with friends. And there she was more openly discussing what she was doing. She shared this uh, cheetah and um, saying that this would be uh, sold. Uh, this was sold already and that it would get an adult cheetah uh, later on. So that's another hint or a hint, almost evidence, I guess, that, that these animals are being sold, at least by, by her own words. And again, you could also see it uh, on the Instagram uh, account, but here she didn't say it was being sold. And more and more evidence, this cup was according to the woman living with MBE 777 uh, was uh, flown out uh, internationally. So it, it's not just in Dubai, according to her own words, these animals were also going across the border. And so, um, yeah, uh, th there is a lot more to it, of course. Um, but uh, one of the things I also saw was that the account MBE777 was following, uh, sometimes uh, were relatively new and they were um, accounts basically focused on these animals themselves. So an Instagram account for a pet. And you could basically see that an animal that was first living in MBE, MBE's apartment 
uh, would end up as a pet in a different home after it was posted on MBE's Instagram. And so by connecting, again, by comparing the pictures, by looking at uh, the accounts he followed, and also um, because they tag each other, you can see that there is a clear connection between uh, this animal that is kept as a pet and this animal that was posted previously on MBE's account. Again, you can compare spots to see it's in fact the same animal. And uh, as I'll, I'll show you on later on, lions as well. So, okay, so I know that there's celebrities who are uh, photographing animals and taking pictures of animals on Instagram for likes and for views. I know these animals are kept on uh, an apartment in Dubai. Uh, I know the woman is also openly talking about selling these animals uh, internationally. And I know some of these animals are um, uh, ending up as a pet, clearly, in different homes. So that still doesn't tell me who is MBE 777 and where do these animals exactly come from? Because they were all very young animals. Um, this was going on for at least a year, uh, probably a lot longer, but you need you need adult animals to, to have young animals, right? So uh, you need at least two adult tigers to get one young uh, tiger. So that was the, the next question, like where, where do they come from? And who is MBE 777, of course. And like I said, he, he never takes selfies. He, you don't, he doesn't share a name or whatever. But because other people tagged him, I could occasionally see uh, very short glimpses of this person. And so here in this video uh, that was posted on YouTube, it's 10 minutes long. And for a couple of seconds in the video, you can see this person. Um, and in a completely different setting um, on Instagram at a later stage, uh, somebody closer to MBE 777 recorded uh, more uh, footage of a tiger and again, this person. And once I started paying attention to, okay, a beard, glasses, black t-shirt, uh, I started seeing him in, in more videos, uh, always on the background, um, Sometimes I saw him without, I saw this uh, Instagram account tagged without any animals. Um, in fact, in on uh, Instagram posts that are now deleted. Um, so it became pretty clear to me that this is likely uh, MBE 777. And uh, that I still don't know his name. Uh, right up until this day, I don't know because he keeps so private. I don't know what his name is. I do know what he looks like. Um, but in the video where he was delivering uh, tigers to the, uh, if you remember, the YouTuber with 10 million followers, uh, there was another person. Uh, and in this video, they went swimming with this baby tiger. And it was, you know, it's a fun video and it gets them a lot of likes and views on YouTube. Uh, but the tiger uh, at one point climbs out of the swimming pool and he runs up to this person over here. And this person is never introduced in the video. Uh, you don't see him, but I do see him in um, other videos and pictures together with this person. So I figured, well, these two might be cooperating. So the person in red and in blue. And the person in blue was not difficult to find. Once I once I started looking for him, um, it was uh, pretty easy. Uh, here's here you see another example of um, a video that involves tigers uh, and a lion, and where you see these two persons again. Again, red, blue, blue handing over the, the lion again, or the tiger in this case. Um, and so one reason why they were easy to find is because this person tagged them both together, MBE 777, but also at Safari Dubai. And so looking for Safari Dubai uh, 
you saw a similar practice. He was tagged in a lot of pictures and videos with lions and tigers and celebrities. But he was a lot more open about um, his own business. And um, you can look him up right now. Uh, he, he, uh, his, he even appears in newspapers and in uh, a TV segment uh, because he has a house with a relatively, well, if you ask me, a small garden where he keeps a lot of uh, exotic animals. So not just lions and tigers, but also uh, birds, uh, snakes, uh, goats, uh, all, all kinds of animals. Uh, and the story he always says in, um, in, on, in this TV interview, in the newspaper interview, he always says, I am, I am just raising these animals. It's, it's a hobby. Um, he's not saying it's like a business that earns him money. He's just saying he raises them. Um, and of course, uh, it's, it's doubtful uh, because we also see him bringing over these animals for photo shoots and he's likely getting money for these photo shoots, right? So it's not just raising them. Um, but also, we, uh, at one point he posted uh, accidentally, he leaked his photo, uh, his phone number in an Instagram post. And by using this phone number, by searching for this phone number, I came across an advertisement where he was selling uh, animals. Um, and of course, uh, it's the same phone number, but I could also see that it was in fact the same picture that he used in the advertisement. This was posted only, a, I think, on the same day. Yeah, on the same day where he himself uploaded this video holding these hyenas, uh, this advertisement appeared. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's exactly the same shot. Only this is a video, this is a picture. And because it's the same phone number, you could, you know, with, with a large degree of, of uh, likelihood, say that it is, uh, is also selling animals, which he doesn't say in his interviews. And uh, there, he's also very um, anonymous here. He doesn't give a name or an address. Uh, you only have a phone number and the message if you want to buy these hyena pups, call this phone number, basically. And so can we get more certainty about Safari Dubai working together with the person we saw earlier, MBE 777? And the answer is yes. Uh, because again, Safari Dubai also shared uh, photos and videos of a tiger cup. And uh, we could see that this is the same tiger cup that we saw at MBE 777. So this tiger already moved from Safari Dubai to MBE 777 to celebrities. Um, so that, that already proves a link. Now, and this is the, the interesting part. Um, we still don't know where these animals come from, but in this case, I do know where it ended up. And it ended up in a private zoo um, by Humayt al Bukraish, who is very famous in Dubai. Uh, he does crazy stuff with tigers and lions, and he has his own zoo where again, he invites celebrities to take pictures. Um, and so this, this uh, tiger here is the star of his zoo. But if you look closely at these stripes, you also see that it is in fact, the tiger we earlier saw uh, held by Safari Dubai, kept in MBE 77's apartment and photographed by celebrities. So we know where this person got this tiger, namely from Safari Dubai and MBE. Um, and that is basically the, the short story of how I uh, followed and tracked animals as they move uh, through this network of a person who is raising them, but doesn't say he's selling them, um, of a 
person uh, who is keeping all these animals in an apartment and is doing that very anonymously, and of celebrities who are probably renting these cubs for uh, Instagram photo shoots, um, but aren't really open about where they are getting these cubs. Um, and it's this is an example with a tiger. Uh, I also did this with a, a lion cub, um, which is a bit more difficult, but you can identify lions um, through their whisker spots. So um, the position of these spots related to each other don't change. And if they have a unique, uh, if they have other spots in between them, they are probably uh, unique. They, they, they are used as a way of identifying lines. Um, and so I could draw comparisons to the uh, photo I saw in the, on this side posted by Safari Dubai. On this side, uh, the lion uh, posted by the Dutch celebrity that uh, began this story that where I um, where I had the question of where did this lion come from? You know, he was posting himself. Uh, yeah, he was sharing a photo of himself with this lion. And that's the question where I began. Like, where did you get this lion? And eventually by, by exploring other celebrities, I ended up with Safari Dubai. And there I saw this lion that looked familiar to me. Um, and the reason that it looked familiar was this spot particularly on this nose. Um, it's a bit, it's not exactly in the center. It's a bit to his left. And it looks it looks similar in in the uh, the shape. Uh, and by looking closely at the whisker spots, uh, I can say with a pretty uh, high degree of uh, certainty that it's the same lion. Here again, this is the other side um, of both lions, uh, the same lion, if you ask me. And you can see these spots match up. Um, yeah, so that's basically uh, how I um, went through um, Instagram posts and YouTube posts, uh, YouTube videos uh, to find out where is the celebrity getting their animals, how are they kept, where are they coming from, and where are they going to, um, and what are the connections in between. So are there, are there any questions? Thank you very, very much for this uh, very interesting uh, uh, presentation. There are many, many questions awaiting you. Some of them are written and some have raised hands. So I, I believe now uh, uh, I've, I've uh, uh, put down the uh, questions. I'll start with the question that we have received on the Q&A. I will read it in English, since it's written in English. Uh, any tips to dig into old social media accounts selling Asian art crafts or whatever? Uh, I am a Yemen journalist. I, at the moment, I'm focused on open source investigations. Um, so old social media accounts selling Asian art crafts. Oh, I am, um, yeah. So that was the question. Yeah. So would you, I'm, would you like to answer one by one or would you like yeah, to take yeah, another yeah. question? I think one by one would be good. Okay, the floor is yours. Please, please go. Okay. So um, uh, old artifacts on, on old Instagram accounts, if I understand correctly, or old social media accounts. Um, in the age of an account uh, is not that relevant um, as long as you uh, i would definitely give you the tip if i can give one tip is to immediately archive everything you find so make sure you download everything um, that, that is available on the account because you never know uh, if something gets deleted and then it's lost forever especially if it's you know older content um there, uh, depending on what you already know of open source methods, there are some ways of, of looking at objects 
and trying to find them on different places on the internet. Um, so basic image reverse searches. So throwing, uh, using Google or Yandex uh, is also a very good tip um, to search the images you have uh, of, of artifacts of objects and see if they uh, are available anywhere else on the internet would be my, my very next tip. Um, and finally, if you uh, are also, so for example, if it is an Instagram account, I don't know what kind of social media accounts you have, but if it is an Instagram account, check out which accounts uh, are following this account, which, uh, which accounts is it connected to, and look at those as well, because those are the, the accounts that likely interacted or have an interest in, in those objects, right? And if, if uh, the person was selling those objects through uh, that account, that must mean that the seller or the buyer is probably also connected to that account, similar to how I uh, use my Instagram accounts to explore that network. Thank you for your uh, uh, answer. Uh, Iman uh, has a question. If you raise your hand, and ask Iman, would you like to um, put your question? You can ask your question directly. I still need to see Iman. Can you can unmute yourself, Iman? Seems mm, Iman has a technical problem. Uh, Zainab also had a raised hand. Uh, Zainab, uh, would you uh, give your question until Iman uh, solves the problem with her mic? Okay. Iman, can you raise your hand? Can you raise your hand, Iman, please? No, no, I want you to raise your hand. Okay, I will, I will, I will give uh, all the questions. And, okay, here is Iman. Iman is with us. Uh, first question I have: What, uh, what uh, these uh, famous people? Uh, what, uh, what's their benefit when they take pictures uh, with uh, with these animals? Uh, any any special benefit? And uh, uh, or is it like because uh, if uh, that uh, animal is taken out of its own environment, so and, and uh, they won't be able to take care of uh, of it uh, when when the animal is kept in its own environment. So why are we keeping them? Mm. So um, yeah. So uh, the uh, what they basically what my impression is is that owning a tiger or a lion is similar as having a very luxury car or a very expensive watch. It is a status item. Um, they, they think they are uh, you know, cool if they are important if they have a lion or that they are strong or important, yeah. Um, and of course, if you, if you share a photo or a video of you playing with your, um, lion or tiger it it gets a lot of likes and views on social media you get a lot of attention and and you can also see that journalists write articles about how how cool you uh, you are mm -hmm. or other you know if it's an environmental organization they'll, they'll say that you're horrible but at least you're getting attention um so yeah that's that's what i think Another question, how did you make sure that it was uh, like a business trafficking? How, did, how long did this investigation take? 
so um, on the length of the investigation, uh, it, it took several months um, at least. Uh, and that's not because I was constantly um, writing or doing this investigation. I just wanted to see over a period of time what happened. Um, so that means I, I um, yeah, I, I began monitoring basically, uh, uh, looking at the accounts and see what they posted uh, throughout the months and uh, over a longer period of time. Uh, the reason for that was that they posted Instagram stories uh, and they would delete those afterwards. So uh, I wanted to find out if I could uh, identify the people behind this through those Instagram stories. Um, and I had to monitor them uh, because they would delete this material after a while. Um, what, what was the other question? Uh, how long and... And what was the question? Is this a business? Uh, is this a business? Oh yeah, yeah. So um, I I don't have evidence of them handing money over to each other, uh, but obviously they need to pay the bills. Uh, you see in the descriptions that they gave in the um, the posts that they were for sale. It's they they did say they were for sale, uh, or that they were being sold. Um, and these these white tiger cups, uh, they are expensive. They can they can easily get into the tens of thousands uh, of dollars, US dollars. Um, so it would be strange to just hand these over to a celebrity who has enough money already. Um, and there was the the accounts that uh, were advertising, also uh, showed. Um, or had in the name and a description that these were pets for sale uh, and they would be delivered if you hand over cash. Um, that was the case for MBE777. Now for Safari Dubai, I actually saw his advertisement on a marketplace where he said the amount of money he wanted to have for each of those cups. So that was to me a clear indication that it was a trade going on. Another question. Do you think the data that you've uh, gathered about these people and uh, these uh, uh, places is uh, stored if in a place that one can't find? Or it's uh, only yours? Um, I am happy to share uh, the data I have. Uh, but um, I feel like I already told most of the story I could from my data and I posted it uh, in the story itself. Um, there are a lot of people writing, uh, uh, not in not in this way, unfortunately, but people do notice when uh, animals are being sold online. So, for example, there is a um, cheetah wildlife organization, and I know they do work trying to find uh, and identify people uh, on social media who are trying to sell cheetahs also. So, in the similar work that I am doing. Uh, but if you if you have any questions or if you want to ask if I found any animals or celebrities, um, let me know. Uh, like I said, everything I found is is probably already in this article. We also have a question. Uh, did the local authorities do anything to hold these people accountable who uh, uh, who were doing business with these animals? No, no. So uh, that's a funny story. After, uh, or not not a funny story at all, <laughs> but a very sad story. But after I posted this article, a uh, French newspaper. Uh, went to the private zoo. Um, let's see if I can find it right now. No, I can't. But uh, the French newspaper went to the private zoo where the animal ended up. Um, so, who uh, might al Bukaish, And they asked a uh, person who was working there and he said, yes, it is illegal. But, uh, 
<laughs> it's it's happening. No, nothing is being done. And one of the reasons uh, uh, that it's, I think, not being done is because the the chief of the Dubai police also has his own uh, owns these kinds of animals and also likes to trade in them. Apparently, and of course, uh, Dubai's royal family, uh, the Al Maktoums, they also have their own private zoo uh, where they uh, pose with celebrities. And these animals must be coming from somewhere too. Um, so even though the law is there, uh, I don't think the authorities are really interested in, in doing much about it, unfortunately. Uh, this answer, uh, when answer a question I was about to read, uh, do you think there is some uh, uh, manipulation by some or use of these uh, 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 celebrities uh, to their names uh, when when uh, taking these pictures? But you have answered this question. Uh, a question: What are the challenges that you face in your investigation? Did you, were, were you subject to any um, uh, sort of violence or maybe some? challenges we need to say that okay did this okay in open sources and not on a field uh, basis uh, work okay you can answer so so yeah uh, because i'm doing everything from behind the computer uh, i'm safely in in amsterdam and i use a fake account so they they can't know that uh, you know i'm looking at them um uh, yeah I don't, I don't face any consequences. This kind of research uh, is makes you very safe from from people uh, uh, who are protective of themselves. And, and now we can answer this question: the ethics of uh, investigative work. Uh, tell us. Uh, 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 Muhammad, I tell you, tell us more about the cases when uh, the court uh, name is uncovered, when their uh, pictures are shown in the investigation. So, uh, and uh, so, what do we do if, if pictures were there in the open sources, uh, and 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 you use in the interview a fake, uh, you use in the fake account? So, can you tell us more about this? Uh, yeah. of course so um with uh, using a fake account there are there are some limits to what you should do um so uh my my fake profile has a, a random name and a random picture not not somebody else's picture but you know basically you could use a a car or whatever or um there are ways to get uh, fake faces, uh, so not real people. That's the first uh, thing I would I would stress is not to use anybody's identity, but make a completely new one. And my second rule is don't interact. So I don't use this profile to talk to them. I don't ask questions because then you are then you are lying, um, in my opinion. Because then you you are, um, yeah. If if I start asking how much uh, is this for sale, then then I feel you're already part of of the business, even if you are doing it anonymously. Um, I just use it to observe. That is my limit. Um, and I I always compare it to uh, I always compare this online to uh, if you're walking down the street, and you see, in this case, a person yelling to hundreds of other people. Uh, about what they're doing and showing photos, then nobody would notice if I joined that group and listened to what that person had to say while he's shouting on the street, right? So similarly, if they have a profile with hundreds and thousands of followers, I just join them anonymously and I listen to what they share and what they are saying. Um, of course, I don't use this fake profile uh, to to talk to people who uh, uh, who are very private or uh, I mean for example if they have a very private group of two or three people 
I am not going to use a fake account to step into that group and see what they're saying because that is a that is a private conversation. But if you are uh, posting to thousands of people, uh, what which in this case was happening, then I don't feel bad about joining uh, your account, uh, following your account anonymously, to see what you're saying. Uh, so that's an ethical ethical rule I keep in mind. Uh, both of them not talking and making sure that it's useful. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. This is a question from Hadil. Hadil says, and, and I'm going to read it in English since it's written in English. I search for Safari Dubai account and I couldn't find it. Is it because of your report? How was the feedback on your report in Dubai? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, uh, uh, at first, um, there, uh, uh, how should I say? So, at first, the accounts didn't respond. I didn't see any changes in behavior. Um, the thing I, uh, because for the article, I eventually had to ask them for comments. And I can't do that from an anonymous. Uh, position. Like I said, I don't use anonymous accounts to talk to people. So I, I, I used uh, an account that basically said, I'm a journalist. My name is Fuka Postma from Bellingcat. And I would like to ask you these questions. And Safari Dubai first blocked me on several of his accounts whenever I talk, tried to talk to him using my, my actual name, saying that I'm a journalist, he blocked me. Didn't want to talk. MBE777, almost a day after I sent him his message and he saw it, he cleared out cleared out his entire account. So he removed pictures he had. Um, and uh, and after that, of course, the like I said, the French uh, article came uh, who followed up on the investigation and asked questions and they found out more. Um, but uh, that's when I realized, okay, the authorities aren't doing much. So I don't expect these people uh, that I investigated to change their behavior because if you know if the police is not coming after them, what's stopping them from from doing this? So if you're not, I haven't checked his account anymore. But if you can't find him, that's that's good news. He probably changed his um, his handle uh, a bit. He did this before. Um, I'm going to take a look. That's very interesting. I didn't know. Uh, Uh, there's a question from Yasmin. Uh, okay, she um, is going to raise the hand. He or he. Yasmin, you can raise your hand. You can raise hand and 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 please uh, tell us your your question. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. I. I wrote the question, but uh, I, no. anyway, the question is there. Uh, my question was, is uh, this this uh, investigation or any other investigation, if you did not come up with a, 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 a result or the nothing was done by the authorities, do, do, uh, uh, would it be considered as uh, 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 something wrong or is it enough what you've done that you've proved uh, uh, what you've done so far and nothing else? So for me, uh, I'm already happy to point this behavior out because it's not just that these people were doing something wrong. It's also that celebrities um, were involved and they're doing this to get attention for their from their fans. And so I already saw um, in the case of um, the Dutch celebrity that I investigated, if you now go to the comments uh, on a picture he posted with Lion, you see this article uh, being posted by, by users saying what you're doing is wrong. And um, as long as a lot of people read it uh, and this becomes, you know, um, people become aware that if celebrities are posting with tigers and lions in their own homes, there's likely something going on behind this because it's not normal for a zoo, for a lion or tiger to be used in that way. Um, there's there's likely 
trade behind this because a regular zoo that takes care of animals does not ship these animals to someone's home for a Instagram photo shoot. So already raising this awareness for me is is good enough. And hopefully, hopefully later on the authorities in Dubai will will take action as well. But that's not what I'm doing it for. Thank you. Uh, the number of questions. Uh, oh, the question was the same. Where are you able to identify uh, the source of these uh, animals? And do you seek to continue this uh, investigation to to really prove what is the last step or stage where mm -hmm. they are coming? Yeah. So um, no, I was not able to find um, where they are exactly coming from uh, i have my um well i guess my ideas about where they might be coming from you see that they end up in a a zoo and the zoos have adults tigers and lions that they can use to breed young cubs um, the problem is that if you want to if you want to be sure about a cup coming from a certain location or from, uh, uh, let's say, an adult tiger. You want to connect the adult tiger to the cup. You need to see them together in the same picture. Um, and that is very difficult, of course. Um, uh, yeah, because you need to see the mother together with the cups. But yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, and uh, the other question, uh, if I'm going to continue this investigation. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm going to focus more about uh, on the international trade. So how do they go across borders? Because uh, once it becomes international, there is a, a lot of laws about international uh, trade uh, in exotic animals and species, and they can be enforced probably a lot better uh, uh, than the internal uh, national laws of the UAE or Dubai. Uh, why you did not uh, follow up this uh, this story uh, or this investigation in other Emirates uh, um, states and only in Dubai? No, I haven't. Yeah, only in Dubai. Um, if you if you have any clues about the, about such stories, then so uh, why why oh why uh, lack of time. <laughs> It, it's uh, it's like I said, I was doing this for a, a couple of months um, and there are hundreds and hundreds of animals, uh, pictures I went through, uh, maybe even a thousand uh, pictures of animals. Um, so it's it's intense. Um, uh, I am I am happy to do this in other other uh, emirates or countries even. Um, so not not just Dubai or the UAE, but also Saudi Arabia, Yemen, uh, the Horn of Africa. Um, but uh, it takes a lot of time. That's that's my uh, reason. Yeah. Uh, another question that's late and yeah, however uh, did you did you seek the uh, advice of an expert uh, in animals or you only depended on your own ideas and uh, uh, and to compare pictures and so on so how did you do that yeah so i i contacted uh, people who work at conservation organizations um, I, I got a, a course on how to identify uh, a lion in the wild and see if it's the same lion, uh, what kind of features change in a lion once it grows up. So lions can get scars, of course, they can lose teeth. Um, their, their manes they have uh, change over time. Uh, but that's, that's how I came to the whisker spots, which always uh, stay the same. And for the tiger, it was easier because I knew that uh, the stripes stay the same.
Uh, there are questions about uh, the open resources. So first, uh, if you can tell us uh, quickly, what are the open sources and the tools uh, that you've uh, used? Because there are, there are many questions uh, in the industry that uh, in this regard. Also, the question, the, the pictures that are on a uh, 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 platform, social media, can they, they be uh, uh, considered as credible, open source? And is it okay to archive these uh, pictures on a uh, social media uh, ecosystem? So this you have. Uh, uh, from a uh, uh, risk, maybe, uh, that we will be prosecuted? Um, depending on the laws in your country. <laughs> uh, so, yes, if, if you see pictures like this posted on social media, uh, there are some ways of seeing whether it's edited, of course, uh, but generally I consider it to be uh, reliable uh, if it's not edited. Um, so that's that's the first answer. Like yes, uh, in terms of open sources, uh, for this research, Instagram was my open source. Facebook and YouTube and the the Russian platform, those were my open sources that I that I um, used. Um, there are tools that you can use uh, to compare uh, stripes of tigers, for example, and and make a. A database of pictures and it will tell you which are the same and which aren't but those are way too technical uh, for me and they're probably expensive as well so uh, I didn't use those uh, I just did it manually uh, looking through these pictures um, so the, the, the pictures online are my open sources and what they wrote next to the pictures and who they followed and, and etc so for archiving, uh, I archive what is important. I leave out what is not important. Sometimes you would see these uh, animals together with children and uh, the accounts of uh, those children, so younger than 18, were tagged in as well. And then I leave them out or I, I block their names uh, because I'm not in the business of, of uh, revealing what children are doing online. Uh, of course, um, so that's another ethical rule. Um, if if the content that these these celebrities have posted is relevant to my story, I have no problem using their pictures at all. Um, you might crop it a bit or mark it to this to make sure to focus on what you are talking about. But as a journalist, you should be able to talk about pictures and show them without getting, uh, you know, into uh, the a discussion of illegal uh, taking pictures or stealing pictures or whatever. You're posting them with a different uh, idea for journalistic purposes. There's a question about how can we apply this tool on other tool, uh, topics? Like uh, um, uh, uh, arm trafficking, and some uh, like one has uh, posted pictures about different uh, using different types of weapons. Uh, so can 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 this be done on on uh, such a uh, topic? Yeah, 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 definitely. So one of the um, you'll you'll see if you go to our website, um, we do this for a lot of uh, um, issues. This the, the exactly the same kind of process. You look very closely at who is involved, what is happening, where else do I see these objects, these animals, these weapons, uh, tanks. Um, and we do this uh, for weapons trade, uh, arms trade. Yes, we do this for uh, uh, pictures of uh, child abuse um, as well. Not, not the children itself, but to find out the location or uh, yeah the location where these children were photographed uh, and then likely you know associated with abuse um there there if it's posted online and it's photographed or videotaped you can use this method to investigate it that's it and how 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 did 
you feel that there's something wrong? Why did you have this notion that there's something fishy about these pictures that actually needs to be investigated? Um, I just I just found it weird that a celebrity can get a lion cub in his home. I uh, my question was how do you get this? Like, do you call a zoo and say I I would like a lion cub? Uh, do you you know, and what kind of zoo? What kind of zoo says, "Yeah, sure, we have a lion here. Have fun. Uh, go take it with you." That that's just weird to me. So that was the question that started this process. Like, how does this happen? Thank you very much for all your answers. Now, what can you? Give us like an advice to use uh, open sources and in investigations, especially in uh, countries and areas where we mostly work in. So how can uh, because uh, accessing sources is difficult and risky. Yeah. So uh, I mean, especially because accessing sources is difficult. Uh, if people are posting online, then then that is. A great way to get more information about what they're doing and it's it's a bit of um something to keep in the back of your mind so you see a picture and it's you feel it maybe it's just a picture but if you look very closely what kind of details do you see um what you know what do you see in the background what what kind of uh, car is the person driving do i see this car somewhere else uh who is this person networked to who is he connected to who is he following who is he talking to um uh, all those those kind of little bits zoom in and explore what's going on um this works better in some countries compared to others uh my story used uh, a lot of social media but you can for example use satellite imagery that is also freely available to everybody uh, through google for example uh, you can also use that to find out more about what's going on in a certain location or at somebody's house, uh, for example. And like that, there, there are hundreds and hundreds of these kind of sources. Um, so again, I use I use social media, but there's so many different kind of sources you can use uh, that are freely available to everyone. Um, so for example, uh, in, in trying to find the apartments where the animals were kept, uh, I I saw the pictures being posted on social media, but uh, to get an accurate view of the building that I saw through the window, I had to use uh, Google Street View and go to that street in Dubai and then change the angle I saw uh, right up to the building so I could see it's the same building, so I could find that location. Um, open source, you know, and by combining all these different elements, you can make uh, a story. So using Google Street View, you were able to identify the building and the and the uh, apartment and the floor, even right? Yeah, exactly. So um, I'll show you the example. Um, here. So on the left is the picture they posted. On the right is a screenshot from Google Street View. And you could basically move this around, of course, and count the floors to see on which floor is it uh, where they are taking this picture. They are right below this sign, it seems like, right? And here's um, Google Maps. So you can see what they are seeing here. This green box is this green box over here, uh, the Ferris wheel. Uh, this purple box here is the pier, and this yellow box here is the white tent. So here I use three sources, three open sources, uh, Instagram, Google Street View, and Google Maps to prove the location. Thank you very much. I will check if there are more questions. 
uh, if there's a question, anybody can be contacted you in order not to post some details. And if, if yes, did you did you identify who? So, so sorry, if did anybody come to not to uh, post anything? Anybody asked you not to post uh, or to ha to reserve some of the things that you find in your investigation? No, no, that didn't happen. No. Did you did you ask someone? Did you anyway uh, contact anyone? Uh, did you? Where are you? I I. I I told the people, uh, the MBE 777 and Safari Dubai, I, I had to ask them for comments, uh, but they didn't respond. So then I posed whatever. How long did you wait until uh, uh, you received a comment from them? How long? I, I give them two weeks. Yeah. Enough time. Right. Another question. Some locations ask that uh, uh, local authorities uh, or security authorities respond. Did you, did you communicate with any official or uh, security authorities uh, regarding the data that you've come up with? Did you communicate with the authorities in Emirates? I, um, so I contacted local environmental organizations who know better who to contact in their country um in dubai um but the the follow-up story by the french newspaper already showed that the authorities are not very interested in in doing anything about this unfortunately uh, but yes i contact local because of course i want to i want to bring out the story but i also want this to stop uh, so it'd be, it would be good to have authorities involved, if you ask me. Um, unfortunately, they didn't. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much for your time, for your generosity in answering all the questions. No problem. And, and thank you very much for the attendees and for this interaction. And we hope that this uh, session was interactive and interesting and uh, different than uh, a topic that we usually discuss. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. Good to know. Thank you. Thank you.